Hey, welcome to Silent Sales Machine Radio. I'm your host, Jim. We're going to have a guest today that I'll bring on in just a moment. He actually started out doing a bit of work for us here in Indiana, which is where my main headquarters in our prep center and our Amazon business is located. My mom runs that part of our business for me. And Josh actually did some work for us before we moved to Florida, pursuing a job, a corporate job. But he took some of those Amazon lessons and some of that Amazon excitement with him. And now he's got a business that's going to do over a million dollars this year at a very healthy margin. He'll tell us that part of the story when I bring him on the show. But it's really cool that as his business has grown, as he's building systems and expanding, he's helping other families be able to stay home with their family. So it's not just his family that's benefiting, but he shared with me after we stopped recording, actually, so I'll share this bit now, that he uses little mini prep centers meaning he'll have his shoppers take the products that they find while they're doing the shopping. And he'll explain that process, as, so I won't go into that now. But they go to different homes in his area where families work together, do the prep and do the work, and they're able to be home together. He's creating jobs, creating opportunity as he's building a system and building a business. And I think you're really going to enjoy hanging out with Josh today. It was great seeing him again because like I said, he actually used to do some work for us. He was at the event last year in Champaign, Illinois and actually helped us do some setup work. Um, that's where he caught the Amazon bug. He's a proven Amazon course student who dove in, created an incredible business and you're going to enjoy getting to know this guy today. He's even going to share with us, look for this tip, he sources at gas stations. That's right. He finds profitable products at gas stations. I hadn't heard that one before. That was a first. So let's get Josh on the line. I think you're going to really enjoy this interview. So Josh, welcome to the show. Great to have you here, man. Tell us your story. Hey, thank you so much for having me, Jim. I greatly appreciate it. Um, man, it's first off, it's just an honor. I, I, I feel privileged to be a part of this group and be on here. So thank you again. Um, man, where do I start? So about three years ago now, I started playing with this thing that I heard about from my father said, Amazon, you can sell on there. And, you know, before that, I thought it was just big companies that were on there. I didn't, you know, I didn't know that it was individuals selling on there. So at that time, I didn't know anything, but I went out and I bought product. I bought some things that I was able to get on a special. Um, it was a company that I was with and I was able to get discounts with. So I started buying that, started uh, they're selling. Um, obviously, that didn't last very long because I thought, you know, at that time you had to get everything at a discount. I didn't realize the replens model. I didn't realize the reverse sourcing. I didn't know any of that. So I was just blindfolded, just trying to run. Um, fast forward to now. I mean, I've stumbled and fall through the process. And now uh, we have a great growing business that is on track of uh, the next month, we'll probably hit about six figures for the month, um, which we are just absolutely blessed and just ecstatic that we're able to get here and where we're at right now. That's awesome. That's beautiful. And you actually did some work for us here in Indiana. You're in Florida now, right? Yes, yes. I, I, had, uh, I, I spent my time in the cold weather and I, I said enough is enough. We had to get down here and get into the warm weather. So yes. Yeah, moved south, moved south, right? And your parents still work with us, Ruben and Melissa. They're still there over at our prep center on a regular basis. And we see them at the, we volunteer at the food pantry with them. And so our, there's a big family connection here. But, but uh, how involved were you? Did you pick up some tips from that before you moved to Florida or Fill me in on that because I honestly don't know how involved you were over there, what your role was. So I, I first off, your mom is absolutely awesome. I love working with her. Yeah, she runs being, that part of my business, by the way, for those who don't know. So I, she's over there a lot more than I am. Yeah, she's absolutely great. If you ever get a chance to meet her, yes, definitely take the time. So, awesome. um, But yeah, I got to really help kind of get that, I guess, some things started over there with them. Um, between helping the setup and the layouts. Um, I actually went back about a year ago to help kind of reorganize some of those things and help some uh, other people that were doing shopping for her and some different programs and some Excel sheets just to help run everything a little bit smoothly for them. 
Um, yeah. But in that process, and we appreciate I it. so much. We appreciate it. It's great how uh, opportunity kind of spreads. You know, you bring, you bring some people in and start them out as, you know, maybe one part of your business and they grow and pretty soon they can become partners or get their own successful business and it kind of just spreads. I love how expansive this opportunity is because uh, it's, it's kind of contagious and that's fine because there's so much opportunity out there that you can never tap into all the potential of what there is. So I love that you've gone down and kind of got your own thing going in Florida and, and uh, you know, tell us a little bit more about your story. You, know, you talked about how you stumbled through looking only for discount products. I think that was a great point you just made. The strategies we teach don't require you to scan barcodes and look for discounts, although you can have some fun doing that and there's some opportunities there. But talk us through that transition for you. How did that happen for you? Had, what was your aha moment? Um, take us through that process. Well, um, so like I said, I, I thought I had to get everything at a discount. So I, I continued to try to find those products and see if I could find it. And I just struggled. It wasn't, you know, I, I was in the corporate world at that point in time, you know, um, working a lot of hours. I, um, you know, I moved down here to work with a big corporation and that's so that, so I was just doing the Amazon thing on the side and it just wasn't panning out like I thought it was, you know, I'd heard all these great stories, um, but it just wasn't working for me. So uh, the aha moment for me though, was CES last year. So I got to go there and spend time with that. And that right there between getting the pack program, I got the pack program probably maybe two weeks prior to going there. And I just, I, I went all in. I mean, I'm talking like, I think I just maybe 24 hours just watched it and listened to it continuously. You know, anything that pertained to me at the time. That's awesome. So I just dove if, in. If I remember it. right, didn't you help us a little bit with setup? And yeah, you were running things back and forth from Indiana to Illinois, the Proven Conference, which our next one's actually coming up virtual here soon. If uh, this broadcasts in time, it's going to be in late October as a virtual event this year, unfortunately. But yeah, so... Last year, 2019, Proven Conference, you were part of helping run stuff from Indiana over to Illinois and get it all set up. And uh, that's right. That's about when you jumped in and started getting pretty serious um, about the course. So yeah, I, I'm, the pieces are kind of coming together in my mind right now too, as we're talking too. Because uh, I remember we had a brief conversation, if I recall, um, at the event. But um, yeah, that's really cool. Okay, so it started, it started kind of falling together for you at the event. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I, before, right before the event, I started doing some books and I started, um, I had, I also helped run a, a library here in town. So they were throwing away hundreds and hundreds of books every week. And I was just like, okay, I know there was a pack course about, about this. So, you know, that's when I started working on that. So before I made it to the proven conference, I shipped out a bunch. Um, and I got some of my first sales while I was at the conference with those and so that was extremely exciting. You know, I can remember that eleven dollars and eighty nine cents. I think what I sold my first book for. Um, but you know, uh, I, after doing that and getting over to the conference, I mean, it was just absolutely amazing. The everybody was so open armed. Uh, you know, it, it really felt like an extension of the family. Everything we did there, you know, we we were there from start to finish. You know, didn't miss anything, and we we're trying. There's trying to get to every different room to hear everybody speak and, you know, and then also helping set up and tear down because we wanted, I wanted to make sure that I could give back somehow to you guys for, you know, your mom invited me to come there and I just, it was a blessing for us. So. Oh, that's I just so great. Man. Thank you so much for being a part of that. It always amazes me. These events, when we do them, we'll say, Hey, we need a few volunteers and we'll have 60 people show up. It's just so great. Everybody uh, kind of pitches in and makes these events awesome. Um, it's just, uh, it's a, it's an incredible community. It is like family. It really is. Those events feel like family reunions. I can't wait to do 2021 Tampa is our plan yes. the summer of 2021. So hopefully we'll be able to get everyone together and that won't be too far from where you're at now. You won't have much of a commute. What city are you in down there? So I'm in Waimama, which is just about, well, it's over by Riverview area. Um, Compared to Tampa, I'm probably about 20 minutes away from Tampa. So yeah, this can be a little so I, just a little hop over for you. So maybe you'd be helping set up and tear down that one too. <laughs> absolutely. I'm all for it. I'm ready. 
That's great, man. Well, okay. So you, so you made the transition away from just looking for discount products. You started diving in, you started with books. And I love hearing people's story of how they explain what replens is or reverse sourcing. How is that different from just going to the discount aisle at Walmart, for example, and hoping you stumble into some opportunities? Talk me through your version of, if you're explaining to a friend what replens is compared to you know, just looking for deals and bargains. Okay. Um, so for me, a replen is something that I can go to a store or now I can have shoppers go to the store and go pick up items that I know will consistently be there, will, that I can have consistent sales for uh, through Amazon and at the same time be the same price. I don't have to worry about hopefully this will be on sale this month because it was last month. So, or every six weeks or whatever it may be, it's the consistency. And that's what really gets me excited about everything. You know, this isn't a, um, I hope I find the right deals. It's no, they're out there. And once you find them, you can just continue to grow off them and get that same product over and over and over and make those consistent sales. And I, I love that. that. That model is just absolutely awesome. Yeah. And you're paying uh, retail. You know, maybe you get a discount card for that store. Like if it's Target, you get your 5% off or whatever, but you're paying retail pricing. And on, on uh, Amazon, there's enough of a markup there that it's consistently profitable for you. And you get, everyone talks about, well, how many replens do you have? How many replens do you have, right? What's your current, what's your current li- list look like? How big is it? Uh, 1,058 right now. That's beautiful. So. And how many yeah, of them are, have, are truly active, like you stay on top of them? We've got about 700. Um, with everything going on, there's been certain items that you know have been a little bit harder to come by. Sure. Um, just because some of the smaller mom and pop stores don't get necessarily as many priorities as when it comes to the distributors. They're starting to thin out a little bit. Um, Cause I love mom and pop stores. I love to go to those. Although, you know, Walmart's a great example. There's still plenty of uh, items there that can be sourced. So. Um, right. But we, go ahead. I was going to say, talk us through uh, one of those mom and pop stories because I was just recently in one here just a few days ago myself and had a great experience talking to the owner, but how do you, what do you mean by a mom and pop store and what do you do when you go in there? So for me, um, you you know, everybody, when you go into a store, normally everybody feels a little timid about walking through the aisles, which I've done this at big retail stores where you sit in one aisle for four hours and go through every single item trying to find things. Well, when you get to smaller stores, you know, that they think something's up and something's wrong. So I try to meet them at the front and say, Hey, my name is Josh. You know, I, I, I have a business for selling online. Do you mind if I source and look around your store? And we've had some uh, different stores that say, absolutely. And, you know, if you buy so much, we'll give you a discount. And I mean, I wasn't even asking for a discount, but if you're offering, absolutely. So, and to build those relationships, because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about for me is having different relationships um, with with these different businesses, with other sellers that are out there um, through this group, I've been able to meet quite a few different people. And it's just, I love doing that because we can kind of talk about different things. Um, and, and that's the unique part. So the relationships with the, the different businesses and even some of the larger retail stores, you wouldn't think that they would be okay with you shopping in there, but there's, it goes by each store. Each manager is a little bit differently. So don't be afraid to ask somebody because I, I always feel if I'm up front with you and I tell you about it at the beginning, you're more likely to, you know, be okay with what I'm doing. If I, you know, you think I'm sneaking around it. Won't be yeah, scared. that's great advice. Even the same store might have five or six managers, different shifts. One of them will be your best friend. And one of them will yep. be like, not in my store. It's kind of funny. You kind of get to know... <laughs> Right. Cause I know the target near me has, you know, there's, there's a night and day manager over there and you got to get, if I get the right one, man, yeah, clear the shelf. I'll give you 15% off. <laughs> you get the wrong Absolutely. one. Only two, two per customer. Right? <laughs> but you just, yeah, yeah, yep. So it, it just never hurts to ask. It never hurts to ask twice, I guess, is the lesson uh, when you're talking to a store manager. Uh, but yeah, I love that you mentioned um, that you have shoppers now. 
Because one of the misconceptions about the replans model, I don't think we emphasize enough, is the fact that it, it can become a very automated process, meaning you've got a team out there doing the business for you. You don't have to hop in your car, go store to store. You don't have to scan barcodes. It can be reduced down to having a team of shoppers. So what do you, you mentioned you have shoppers. And I, I wasn't sure how many you have or what your process is, but where are you at in that process? So we've got uh, someone that's been helping me shop for about three months now. Um, and we are bringing on two other shoppers now in different locations because I've been traveling around, you know, our area is pretty big down here in Florida. You know, I'm not too far from Orlando. I've got Ocala, I've got Tampa, St. Petersburg. There's so many options. I mean, it, some days I wake up and I just look around like, okay, you know, which way am I going to go today? So um, I, I brought some people on and we're continuing to bring a couple more on. And they go out, we hand them a a list. It tells them exactly what stores they need to go to. It'll say uh, the amount of items they need to purchase, what they're purchasing. And we'll give them, you know, the money or the card to be able to uh, handle those transactions. Then next thing you know, they're showing up at our doorstep, you know, or at, you know, where we're packaging everything and they're dropping everything off. And it's absolutely amazing. It, it's the best thing ever. One thing I've learned from you, and it was real hard for me, is that you said, quit packing as soon as you can, quit touching boxes, quit doing some of those things and get those automated. And, and so it was a struggle for me because I, I, I'd done everything at the beginning for the first year and a half, everything on my own. I had to, you know, I, I, it, it's my business. I should be doing it. And that's what I thought. And it kind of capped myself at my growth where I could grow. As soon as I started bringing on other people, it just took off. Yep. You'll grow much, you'll grow much faster that way. Uh, the first person that, uh, this is Dave Ramsey advice. And I shifted my advice slightly about five years ago when I talk on this topic. But the first person you hire should be someone who's making money with you, meaning you teach them the skill set that you have. So they have the ability to go out and find a more replens. That's, a, that's the perfect first hire is someone who can go out and find profitable inventory. After that, you create systems where you be, you're only doing the things that only you can do. Only do the things that only you can do. So if you're putting tape on a box, you should be asking yourself, am I the only person that could put this tape on this box? If the answer is no, and you've got a profitable business, someone else should be putting the tape on that box. Right, that's how you grow. You grow a system, and you're actually growing an asset at this point, right, Josh? I mean, th- this is a sellable business now because you've got your shoppers; they do their thing. You've got your other person who's out there finding replens, doing their thing. This is now a sellable business with it could be valuated, right? So you've got a real business. You can sit back. So any role that you're playing, there's someone else out there that could be. That's what I love about this replens model. Is it's not just you know the yard sale model, hope I find something today. It's, you've got your list of 700 predictable items that you buy and sell consistently and a few hundred more that when you can find them, you know they're going to sell and you send out your shoppers. It's a beautiful model. So what, what challenges have you run into along the way? Uh, what are some of the pain points of this where maybe you got frustrated or uh, it, was, it was hard to, uh, to move to that next stage? What were some of the challenges? Can anything come to mind? Like I said, the biggest challenge would be getting out of my own way and realizing that I can't do everything. And I, like you said, bringing the first person that, that came on board with me, he's I, I started training him how to do everything. And he's right there, a partner with me. And uh, he's there with me every day. Uh, and that's how we started. So getting out of my own way and realizing that I can't do everything and you know we need to grow this where it can sustain with or without me yes. because at the end of the day, if somebody would get sick, you know, you've got something going on. I would hate for anything like that to happen, but you know, I've had some scares, you know, in the family, uh, recently, you know, at the beginning of the year. And just, I want to make sure that at the end of the day, this, this business can continue moving and that we can provide for you know a business for our family, for our kids and to move forward. Yeah, building building in redundancy. One of the things I always like to challenge people with when they start working for me on any project is I say one of your most important jobs is 
have someone else that can replace you if something unexpected happens. It's not my responsibility to make that happen. It's your responsibility to make that happen. And I'll pay you to make it happen, but make it happen. Someone else is already working for us. Take a day, show them what you do, document it. So we have systems and processes in case the unexpected happens. So, and I also ask that they would commit to before you ever leave, you'll fill us in on everything that you do. You're not just going to vanish on us. Just kind of getting a verbal commitment from them on that, right? You know, as a small company, we can do that. Larger companies, you have to have people sign documents and you've got a big old thick, you know, work, workers <laughs> agreement or whatever. But those are just a couple tips. One of the books I love that you might enjoy, Josh, if you haven't read it yet, listeners would too. Uh, I mentioned Dave Ramsey already once. Entree Leadership. Have you read that one yet? Yeah, we listened to that. Uh, we, I can't remember. We bought the virtual book or the, the audio book and listened to that. And absolutely loved listening to Dave Ramsey. A lot of really, yeah, a lot of really good practical tips from going from card table in your garage to, in his case, five, six hundred employees. But for us, even those first few steps of adding people to your team. Uh, he's just got some real good practical advice in there. So since we're talking about growing a team and creating an automated business, but uh, what lessons do you have? One of the, one of the questions, I'll ask you a two-part question. You can answer either one of these, okay? What lessons do you have for us just in general? If you're talking to the listeners of this podcast, just give us some lessons. Um, the other is tell us a big success story, like you know, a, a moment where things really came together nicely and you're like, whoa, that's a gold mine. And tell us a story behind that. Take either one of those questions or both. Okay. Uh, so, um, you know, a big thing that for the aha moment for me, um, you, we get so focused on, we have to go after whether it's a category that we're focusing on or it's just one area because we get in our heads that it has to be this or something I, when I was helping my partner grow, um, I, the first question I asked him when we went out shopping, I said, what's, what do you know the most about what area? And he said, electronics. I said, all right, awesome. And he said, so is that where we're going? I said, no, we're going complete opposite because the problem that we, we get into is when we get in front of products, we put our emotions into it and we say, well, we know this is a good product because I use it every day or I know all the reviews. That one's great, but this one isn't down here. Well, you don't know that that's what's selling or what's not selling. So you've really got to take any of your favoritisms, any of your opinions out of the equation. Your emotions, your instincts, right? Yeah. Useless. Absolutely. You just got to get, don't know, don't care and just go after it. And, um, that, that's really helped me and helped other people that, you know, that's, I, that's I've great advice, on. Josh, because that's, that is one of the, you know, there's a few really big decision points when you're starting a business that can really send you down a bad path. And one of them is find something you're passionate about. And I just, I don't like that advice. I, I would rather find something that customers are passionate about. And I'll get passionate about it real quick if I'm serving customers well. I kind of flip the script, right? Like who, yeah. the illustration I always use is who as a kid was thinking, man, I can't wait to own a chain of dry cleaners when I grow up. Like no one thinks that. But at yeah. some point, some teenage kid was hired at a dry cleaner. He worked hard. He served customers well. The customers were happy. He became a manager. Pretty soon he became an owner. And now he's very passionate about dry cleaning. And his customers love him. He didn't set out with dreams of owning dry cleaning businesses, but he, he grew into that because when you serve well, you become passionate about whatever it is that you're doing. So become passionate about finding great deals that people can buy online and they're happy to do it out of the convenience of it. You don't care what the product is. You care about the happy customer at the other end. That's Amazon's goal is happy customers, right? So we're just helping them meet their goal, providing that convenience to those customers, it shows up right on their doorstep. And yeah, they're willing to pay a few extra bucks for the convenience, especially right now when the whole world has decided they're going to stay home and shop, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and customer service is big for us. We, no matter what, uh, there, there's certain things in this business that you just can't control whether it be through the shipping company or something happens or it doesn't get delivered. And, you know, a lot of times you feel like, well, no, I, 
that's not on me. I shouldn't have to pay for that. But you got to understand that customers come first no matter what. I was in the restaurant industry when we were younger. We used to have a restaurant back in Indiana. And I really learned that through that process. It's 10 times more when it's online. So you just, you know, always just be positive about it and just want to provide good service. And no matter what comes your way, you'll be successful through it. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good tips, man. So give us some sourcing tips. If I was your buddy wanting to make a little extra money on the side and you're going to like, Hey man, I'll give you a little inside tip here. Here, Here's what you should go do. You're telling thousands of people this right now, by the way, so don't give us your best replan or anything, but you know, just give us a little shove in the right direction. If you're going to give us some good advice. Okay. Um, so something I hear a lot is everybody's asking questions like, is this place good to shop? Is this place good to shop? Yes, yes, and yes. And, I, and I'll, I'll say this, I'm okay. Um, so there's a Speedway, gas station Speedway. You wouldn't think you could find anything there. You can't. I, for fun, I, I, every now and then, I just, I'll ask uh, one of my friends or maybe my wife's with me, can we just stop over here real quick? And just for fun, I'll go in and see if I can find something. I was getting fuel. I had one of my kids with me and they were over there looking at the snacks. And I was like, well, I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to check some items out. And I found an item that sells multiple times a month, same price. It's kept the same price for over a year and a half. And I can go there anytime I want and continue to buy it and buy it and buy it. So (laughs) everybody's got to quit thinking small-minded, have an open mind and just go after it. And for those who don't know what a Speedway is, uh, you know, we've got them here in Indiana too. I, they may be nationwide, I'm not sure, but it's, it's a gas station chain where basically everything is already marked up 300% over retail. I mean, it's oh, like, yeah. you know, a can of Coke is $3, right? I mean, it's like, mm-hmm. everything's already marked up. If you can find profitable inventory off the shelf at a gas station where the prices are ridiculous, uh, yeah. that's awesome. You know, that just tells you how expansive this opportunity really is. Uh, so you can, anytime you're driving by a Speedway, you can fill up for gas, run in, clear the shelf of whatever that magic product is, and he just paid for your gas tank. <laughs> yeah, and I, I won't tell you the other gas station, but there, there's multiple gas stations that I do that. And every time I go get fuel, I swing in there and I empty the shelves out of what they've got. And they're like, oh, hey, how's it going today? So you're getting a bunch of those again. Yes, I am. <laughs> You must so, really it's like crazy. That. I go in, yeah, right. It's crazy. You know, I walk out of there spending more money than I do on fuel. So Yep. And then the and Amazon sends you even a bigger check. You gotta figure out who the <laughs> yeah. distributor or wholesaler is, man. You've been working on that yet? Yeah, we've started working with wholesales and trying to figure that out. Um, you know, obviously with the timing right now, a lot of people are hesitant because they want to make sure they take care of their previous customers that they've had for 10, 20 years, sure. but we're getting our foot in the door and getting to know certain people. So when that time does open up, we're right there to go ahead and get started. Yeah. Build that relationship or maybe even your favorite Speedway manager, just say, Hey, instead of ordering 15 of these, how about you order three cases next time and I'll pay you for them. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. There's there's ways to get in the back door, but man, that's beautiful. I love it. I love it. And you, you've got some good tips. Anything else you want to share with the listeners about uh, you know encouragement or advice? I'd love just kind of turning absolutely. successful students loose at this point in the show as we kind of start to wrap it up. You know, just you know, give us any more advice that's in your mind or anything else you had planned to say today. Um, you know, when you start your day off and when you start about this business. Don't listen to anybody except what you hear and, you know, what you know and what you've like heard from positive people, you know, mm-hmm. um, because if you have the right mindset, this can grow to unimaginable, you know, it can be whatever you want it to be. So I, I've had multiple people tell me there's nothing. Uh, you can't do that anymore. Amazon's dead going out there and shopping. You can't make any money doing that. And I, I'm, it's, it's false. So you got to get the right mindset, no matter what, you know, start with the right mindset and the rest will follow. It's beautiful. Yeah. That's great advice. Uh, it, yeah. Success starts in your head for sure. And that's something we don't do a whole lot around here. I've never really spent a lot of time on mindset type activities or lessons because I've never uh, had to struggle with it myself. But it's something that a lot of people really do struggle with is the motivation to do the business. 
Uh, so yeah, you've got to be listening to positive voices. Who you're listening to matters. If you've got people telling you that it'll never work, or if you're watching you know, YouTube videos, say, oh, it's dead. What you need to do is get in our Facebook group and scroll through the... We got about 700 recent success stories, real people like you. You should pop yours in there. I don't know if I've seen yours yet or not. Just I, Here's a screenshot of my numbers. Here's what we're doing. Here's where we started. Uh, it just encourages and inspires people. So what's your goal for, for 2020? What's your sales goal total? You set your goal yet? Yeah, for for 2020, we're we're going after that. About 1.2 million is what what we're going for. So, and I'm going swinging, and I, I know I've got a great group of people around me that we're going to hit that goal. That's so, awesome. And and you know, how much of that are you, is a, what's your you know what's your margin for a return on investment there? Right? Either way you want to put it, uh, about 23 percent. 23 percent net. Yep. So so we we've. We've been, you know, and that's with everything going on, uh, bringing on new people. Taking yeah, care that's of after everybody's banks, paid. So. You're putting about yeah. a, you hope to put about a quarter million plus in the bank yes, sir. For, for your, for yourself. Uh, with a, with that sounds like a beautiful business model to me, man. I love it. That's awesome. Absolutely. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, I appreciate you being on the show, man. It's good to see you. And hopefully we'll all get to see you in Tampa in 2021. July 2021. That'll be here before we know it, man. I'm super excited. Hopefully the world's back to kind of normal by then. We call, I'll come down and hang out at your house. What do you say? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, anytime. Like, you guys just let me know. We'll open doors here. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, Josh. It's been, it's been really cool hanging out with you, man. And I'll talk to the listeners now and just remind them that uh, any links that we talked about or any courses or any events that we talked about today, go to the show notes, silentgym.com. This is one of those episodes today where uh, it's also on YouTube if you're just listening to this. So there'll be a link in the show notes where you can go to YouTube and see Josh. And uh, one of my wife's favorite paintings actually behind him. And a bunch of my wife's paintings behind me. Uh, so yeah, come on over, hop on YouTube. And uh, you can definitely check us out there as well and subscribe. But silentgym.com is the only link you'll need. Go to today's podcast episode and you'll see all the links that are needed. And just a huge thank you to Josh for hanging out with us today, sharing his story. It's another one of the great members of this community. Uh, God bless all the business building warriors out there. I'll have another episode for you just like this one real soon. 